German authorities have foiled an alleged plot that aimed to topple the government in Berlin by force. Dozens of arrests were made in overnight raids that spanned the nation. They targeted suspected supporters of a far-right movement that rejects the legitimacy of the current German state. The country's top federal prosecutor said the alleged coup plotters intended to form a new German army and install a minor aristocrat as the country's leader. And let's get more now from DW political correspondent Benjamin Alvarez Gruber, who's been following this very closely for us today. Benjamin, an alleged plot to overthrow the German government. How big was the real threat here? It was definitely a big threat, and that's also what authorities said today. This group started meeting back in November of last year. They had regular meetings, and as we just heard in the report, there was a political arm, and there was also one in charge of weapons, in charge of also getting a people from security forces, from the police to go together with this plan to overthrow the government. And it goes that way that they even went into Bundeswehr barracks to see where their own soldiers it would be based. So it's pretty concrete, the plans that they had already. And as we also saw in the report, that they had individuals who would take then these positions as head of this new government or as a justice minister. So that's also something that authorities repeated today by saying that the threat was real. And if we look back how this investigation started, it was indeed the connection between this group of the people that were arrested and another group that wanted to kidnap Germany's health minister, Karl Lauterbach. So that's where this investigation started and where that ended also with all the raids in several German cities today, it detaining these 25 people that will now face justice. How have politicians and the authorities reacted to the news? So there have been two reactions on one side, praising the police officers that were involved in the raids and also the domestic intelligence uh, services that also conducted all the investigation over the past months. This is a pretty long process. And on the other side, they're also showing how deep uh, this goes into the problems that we have seen and that many are saying that German authorities have a blind eye on right-wing extremism. One of those who reacted is German President Frank-Walter Steinmeier, who said... This incident represents a new level in the extremist threats, something similar that government spokesperson Steffen Hebestreit said that is extremely dangerous, pointing out the plans that you also mentioned of attacking and of this armed assault on the Bundestag of the lower house of Germany's parliament. Uh, let's talk about these accusations of turning a blind eye toward far-right extremism and the possibility and the growing threat of political violence. What more can you tell us about that? There have been some attacks in the past years. There have been a murder of a conservative politician of Walter Lübcke, another right, far-right extremist that also um, did an attack on a synagogue. And what domestic intelligence services have been accused on is to having a blind eye when it comes to right-wing extremism, but therefore focusing on Islamists and also on left-wing extremism. And that's something that the former German Interior Minister Horst Seehofer said, saying that there has been an increase of cases and they should take this more seriously. And what many are asking the government to do and asking the intelligence service is not looking at just lone people who want to commit these attacks, but also when there's a structural problem, when we look at police officers and when we look also at the armed forces. And that's a big problem of this Reichsbürger movement, that many of those who are in this group or are in this right-wing extremist group, they do not accept Germany, the German order and the constitution, also know how to deal with weapons and have also access to classified information. And that's why many see that this Reichsbürger movement is especially so dangerous and are taking this threats and also this rates uh, very, very carefully. DW political correspondent Benjamin Alvarez Gruber, thank you. We can now speak to Till Steffen. He's a member of the German parliament for the Green Party, which is one of the coalition partners in the government. Welcome to DW, Mr. Steffen. Thousands of officers, more than 100 raids across the country. What's this telling us about the, the threat level of what happened today? Of course, it's a serious threat if you see that uh, you have so many suspects arrested today. And uh, the threat is um, very special because we have soldiers, we have a policeman, and we have even a judge among those arrested people uh, who was uh, planning to, to do this coup today, uh, these days. And uh, then um, uh, it's, you can see it's really a problem that, it, that there are not only extremists, 
in some uh, some groups anywhere because but they are inside uh, the structures of the state and so we must take it very serious and we must do everything to throw out people of police of the army of uh, the judge system who are extremists like those arrested today the the people involved in this movement known as Reichsburger tended to be, let's say, belittled or, or ridiculed here in Germany for their worldviews rather than being taken seriously. H how big a mistake would you say that was in hindsight? Um, of course, they seem to be kind of ridiculous because they have their own passports and things like that. Um, but in fact, uh, they uh, undermined um, the, the German state because many people wasn't willing to respect the German state authorities um, because of those of those groups. And uh, inside those groups, some of them um, became more and more extremistic and were taking plans to overthrow the state as we see today. And of course, um, if people uh, insist in those ideas that there is no such thing as the Federal Republic of Germany, then they are ready to, to use forces one day. So I think we should take them very, very seriously and we should uh, be very careful, um, especially not having people of the Reichsburg are seen in the police, in the army and other state institutions. So you, you've said very clearly that we need to take this very seriously. Of course, ideas like that, conversations like this grow online. So what is going to be done? I mean, will monitoring people with, with extremist views, um, uh, you know, their safe spaces on, on social media, what will be done to, to track them more, more seriously? Uh, the fact that we have this uh, this big uh, activities of police today shows that the police and the Secret Service is able to track them very carefully, and they track them for many many months. So where they were able um, to arrest such a big group of uh, people planning to do such a coup, so. I'm quite confident um, of the work of the police and the Secret Service, and uh, we can say that we have a very uh, clear view on a big part of the scene, but of course it's not everything of it, and there are many more people, and we have to look very carefully in social media and other groups, but of course there is no relevant telegram group without any um, spotters of the Secret Service or the police. Mr. Sheffern, I do just want to ask you about the fact that a member of Germany's far-right AFD party um, is also among those arrested. AFD <coughs> lawmakers sit in Germany's parliament with you every day. To what extent are they a threat to democracy? Um, in parliament, they are working on making the work of parliament uh, ridiculous. And so they work on weakening the respect of the parliament every day. So that, well, that's what we see every day in every committee meeting uh, and uh, at every day. But at the same time, we see we have strong links to the extremist right-wing movement. They have um, people working for the AfD in German Bundestag who, have, who, has, uh, who are extremists um, that, we, uh, very, that we know very exactly. And um, also this judge uh, arrested today was known ex as an extremist, but the present rules uh, doesn't work on, on pulling them out of uh, public service. And we have the same thing with the judge returning to his judge job uh, last year after the last election in Saxony. And um, there was a decision that he could be taken out of uh, public service, but it's very difficult to do this and we have to strengthen the rules in order to keep extremists out of public service. Till Stefan, a German lawmaker with the Green Party, thank you so much for your time. Thank you. And we're going to go back to our top story today, the alleged plot that aimed to topple the German government in Berlin by force. And for more on that, I'm very pleased to welcome Tobias Ginsberg, a writer and journalist whose books are based on um, long-term undercover investigations. For months, he lived under a false identity among German right-wing fringe groups like...
the Reichsburger. Tobias, thanks so much for joining us today on DW. Can you help us yes, understand having... how people like the Reichsburger, as they're known, how they think? What, what is their goal? Well, um, the core of the so-called Reichsburger movement is some, something extremely dangerous because it's extremely common. Our problem is in Germany is not with this specific group. It's far worse. It's with, with right-wing conspiracy theories. Those are theories which we have in Germany since 1945. It's like a prolonging of Nazi ideology. The idea that our German state is not a uh, real and authentic and legal state by just a plot by the vengeful jury or by the allies or by some other occult forces. The great plot, the great conspiracy. So, and this is an idea we have in Germany since 1945. So, so I just want yeah. to clarify there. So th this is going back to the Second World War and they are saying that the German state is, is somehow false, has been set up by, by other countries, by the Allies. Sure, sure. Hitler promised us a thousand years. We only got 12. So old Nazis were not satisfied. They wanted more. So in beginning, in 1945, we had this conspiracy theory that whatever state will be built on top of the Third Reich, that state will not be legitimate. And now we have something to do against that. If you ask in Germany any neo-Nazi, they will say, of course, the Federal Republic is not our real Germany. And now the evil thing, the uh, horrible thing, is that this notion came into different milieus, different scenes, into the bourgeoisie, into the center of society via conspiracy theories. So the plot, or the attempted plot we saw just now, today, just shows exactly that. Those people were not all, like, classically from the far right. Those were people from from the center of society, people from parliament, people from... from uh, 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 bourgeois jobs and and all walks of life. So from what you're saying, this is really quite widespread, this way of thinking. Can you explain to us then how they're organising? I mean, they must be aware that they're under, they're under police surveillance. So how, how are they organising themselves? It's very difficult to generalise in a movement with so many people because we have all different kinds of groups and movements. I myself joined people who were like extremely esoteric, new agey cults. Then you had like uh, far right sects. Some people were more or less normal neo-Nazis as you would imagine them. So um, they all work a little bit different. And the official numbers we have, like, I don't know, like 100,000 people who belong more or less to this movement, this is a very loose estimate. Okay. Just, just to look People more specific. People who believe this. If I could yeah. just ask you to, to sort of go in more specifically at the people involved. Among the people arrested today are an active yeah. member of the German armed forces and several reservists. So how much help mm -hmm. are these far-right networks getting from it, the very inside of Germany's security apparatus? Again, I cannot tell you any concrete numbers. Plus, if you go inside, this is, of course, an extremely concrete goal. The hope to get soldiers, to get people from the police, to get people uh, from within the state is, of course, a, a, a very attractive goal for most of these people. On the other hand, many people say they would be extremely well connected because it sounds, sounds very good. So uh, we have to differentiate, differentiate how dangerous, how imminent is a huge attack. I don't think this is the problem. I think the far greater problem is how many people are reached by this way of thought and that the logical conclusion is not only to topple the state, topple the government or whatever, but to act in self-defense, to work against the state, to work against the police, the higher-ups who are out to get you. The German government said that the police raids today were proof that authorities are vigilant, that they're on top of things. What do you think about that statement? Well, <laughs> I mean, um, this problem is nothing new. And if I think back, just in the last few years, we had this horrible mass murder, this terrorist attack by conspiracy theorists who believed all the same things the people who were gotten today thought as well. We had a murder from some uh, anti-vaxxer at a gas station. We have uh, uh, violent deeds again and again. 
So it's not this one event. It's a string of events. It's a way of thinking which spreads at a rapid pace. Tobias Ginsberg, author and journalist. Uh, we'll have to leave it there, but thank you so much for those really fascinating insights. And let's bring in Lawrence Blumenthaler. He's a spokesperson for the Amadeo Antonio Foundation here in Germany, which works to promote human rights and oppose extremism and anti-Semitism. Mr. Blumenthaler, good to see you. What does the scale of today's raids tell you about the threat emanating from right-wing extremist groups here in Germany? I mean, it's basically something that we're observing over the last and also warning about the last four years. We are facing a serious crisis of democracy. The COVID pandemic spread of conspiracy beliefs and also the underestimation of right wing extremism have contributed to extreme forms of radicalization, especially in the digital space. As today has shown, it's not just fringe conspiracy believers, but also judges, former Bundestag members and active former or former soldiers, um, also from the special forces that were part of this network that was persecuted today. And this alone shows how seriously we need to take this threat. Germany right has long been extremism. accused of, of turning a blind eye on especially right wing extremism, but authorities say that today's raids prove the state is vigilant and on top of things. Do you share this assessment? I think on the one hand, today for the first time we've seen a glimpse of what politicians like to call a defense of democracy and I'm very happy that uh, today they acted upon that promise. But on the other hand, I think the mistakes that have been made in the past won't just be solved by good police work. We need, furthermore, we need a holistic approach that strengthens also prevention and de-radicalization measures and democracy education, um, because otherwise I don't think that this will go away anytime soon. Mm. How concerning are the group's ties to Germany's security apparatus? I think it is very concerning that uh, former and armed uh, soldiers are always part of these networks when they um, finally get toppled by the police. And um, I think that is something that the politicians and police forces need to deal with themselves and not just externalize it by some of the rates, but we also need better education and um, some sort of awareness within these institutions as well. Democracy work doesn't stop within the police. Mm. So the threat has been made visible, but by no means eliminated. You talk about education, but there are sectors of society. You know, the, the ringleader of this group, he, he was, um, I believe, in his late 60s. Um, how do you reach people who are so advanced in age and probably also uh, pretty settled in their worldviews with um, initiatives of education, as you suggest? Yeah, I think uh, when we talk about education, I don't just mean like uh, classical school education, but furthermore, um, we rather need to tackle all parts and aspects of society. For instance, also um, people that work, that do administrative work, um, especially in regards with Reichsbürger ideology, um, oftentimes they are confronted with this forms of ideology in the first place when people want to burn their passport or hand in their ID because they don't believe in the existence of the German state. So I think that is something where different parts of the German state and administrative body should cooperate uh, just much better to, to tackle these issues and radicalization tendencies much earlier before they turn 60 and have a closed worldview. Um, you say that we're in a crisis of democracy in Germany. How resilient is the democracy here in the country uh, in, this, in this crisis, as you call it? I think it is more resilient than, um, th than we like to believe in, in, in a lot of ways, um, because First, there was 2015-2016, um, the summer of migration, 
then we had a massive racist um, mobilization that then tra transferred into the COVID pandemic and the anti-vaxxers and the spread of conspiracy beliefs. And now we face Russian disinformation and the energy crisis, which also draws a lot of people into conspiracy beliefs and right-wing extremism. But I think especially the, the good work of uh, civil society and on some parts also the German state has contributed to a rather resilient German democracy. Including the work of your organization, the Amadeo Antonio Foundation, Lawrence Blumenthal. Thank you so much.